Today I decided I would make a quick video talking about some of my favorite online tools that I've discovered while I've been at Georgia Tech. First off, I'm not going to be talking about anything like Canvas or Buzzport in this video. Those are all really common tools that any Georgia Tech student already knows about, so we're just not going to talk about those. And second, this is definitely not a complete list. These are just a couple tools that I've personally found really useful. But if you have any other ones that you use, feel free to leave those down in the comments below. I'm sure the other people and myself as a Georgia Tech student would appreciate hearing about those. Also, one more quick note before we hop into things. Some of these will require a Georgia Tech login, but other ones don't. So if you're a prospective student, you will be able to check out some of these. Just realize you won't be able to access all of those resources until you actually come to Georgia Tech. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is Course Critique. Now, I've been using Course Critique for several years, and I imagine a fair amount of you guys have been using Course Critique as well. But one of the main things I didn't know is that there's two main ways that you can use Course Critique as a student. The first way you can use it, which is definitely the more basic way, and that's how I started out using it, is you can just look up your course identifier, so it could be something like CS 1332 and Course Critique. And I'll just pop up and I'll show you all the professors who've taught the class, their distributions of A's, B's, C's, etc., and the average GPA for the course. This in itself definitely is useful, however, there's a couple of main issues. The first one is it's not always kept up to date, so if you have a professor who's relatively new to teaching the class, they typically don't show up there. The second thing is those averages and GPAs are often out of date and don't really reflect the current GPAs for those courses. For a while this was the only way that I used Course Critique, but then eventually I got fed up with the fact that it never seemed to be up to date. So if you've ever looked at Course Critique, you've probably noticed there's a little thing that says, looking for a deeper dive into grades, is your data not up to date? Click here. So naturally I eventually clicked there. Doing this essentially lets you manually filter everything for yourself so you don't have to rely on whatever data they have already conglomerated for you. And as a result, you can filter by the class that you want, or the professor that you want. And the other nice thing about this is, if your professor has never taught that specific course before, you can look at the other related courses they've taught, just to get a feel for what kind of GPAs they were giving out. The first time you use it, I realize it might seem a little bit overwhelming, but realistically, the only things I ever use on there is for the professor field and the class field, and that's really all you probably need. Once I started using Course Critique this way, I never went back to the initial way. Honestly, there is so much more information here and it is so much more powerful to use it this way. And if you've watched any of my videos where I broke down all the classes I've taken and I gave those GPAs and grade distributions, this is exactly where I was getting it from. When it comes to scheduling my classes, this is probably the most important tool that I use. So if you haven't already checked it out, I would definitely recommend you do that before you schedule your next set of classes. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is relatively new, at least at the time of this filming, and that would be the CIOS or CIOS evaluation tool. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you know what the CIOS is, but for any of you who aren't currently going to Georgia Tech, it's essentially just a means of students evaluating their professors at the end of every semester. Georgia Tech is really big on getting professors to get their students to fill it out, just to get feedback and see how they're doing. However, this is the first time that we're getting access to that data. This is actually a great idea because historically speaking, Georgia Tech and professors have struggled to get students to fill things out because there isn't much of an incentive. Occasionally, professors will give out bonus points or curves or things like that. But now that we can actually access the data, there's an incentive for us to fill it out so that we can use it as a tool when we're trying to schedule other classes. Like I said, this is pretty much a brand new tool and I'm pretty sure it came out in the summer at some point, so I've never been able to use it for scheduling my own classes yet, but I'm planning to use it for scheduling my classes in the spring, and just from playing around with it a little bit, it potentially could be even more important than using Course Critique. This is obviously a lot less about grades and more so about how effective a course and a professor are but if you're someone who's trying to learn a lot in college and make sure you're taking good, useful classes, this is going to give you something that Course Critique simply can't because it's only about GPAs. Now, it is important that we take these ratings with a grain of salt because they're subjective and not everyone participates, and it's possible you'll have some people who are giving lower ratings to professors simply because they're spiteful for not getting the grade they wanted, but overall, I definitely think this is going to be a useful tool, and I would definitely recommend you check it out before the next time you schedule classes. All right, so the next tool is less so functional. It's not gonna help you get a job. It's not helping you choose your classes. But for me, it's a really interesting way to see what Georgia Tech alums are doing, specifically in terms of job placement and in terms of salary. So essentially, this is going to give you an idea for bachelor's and master's students what Georgia Tech graduates are doing after graduation. Now, there's a ton of different categories here, but here's just a few of them. You can see change over time, salaries by major, the average job offer rate depending on the major, 
earnings based off industry or location, and then just a whole bunch of other stuff. Taking a look at this page now, it looks like they gave it a UI overhaul since I first came to college. It looks a lot nicer now and the data is better laid out. And now you get some nice visualizations if you don't wanna just sit there and weed through the data yourself. It looks like there's a fair number of restrictions and things you can't really access unless you have something called FERPA training. Now, I'm not really sure what that entails and what you need to do to get that, but without even being logged into my Georgia Tech account, I was able to access quite a bit of stuff on there and honestly probably the most important stuff that you would be most interested in seeing. So I definitely recommend if you haven't already that you check this out. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is Career Buzz and like you can probably guess from the name, it's all about your career and helping you land jobs and internships. Now, admittedly, I do wanna start off by saying this. I've never landed a job or an internship through Career Buzz. I've always gotten them through other sites and other sources or the career fair itself. So I just wanted to point that out, even though I think it is definitely a good supplemental option to other job application sites. One of the things that I like about Career Buzz, even though I didn't like it at the time, but I appreciate it now, is that it tells you which jobs you're not qualified for. Now, back when I was a freshman or a sophomore, this was kind of frustrating because I wouldn't even be allowed to apply to something because it said I wasn't qualified versus other sites when you can just apply to basically everything. But it does keep you from wasting your time on something that you realistically don't have any shot at landing because you simply aren't qualified. Another thing that's potentially useful, and probably even more so with things moving online and being virtual, is that it's going to interface with Georgia Tech's career fairs. So for the Georgia Tech career fair for startups, I think that's on October 29th, that's going to be through Career Buzz. So if you want to check something like that out, you definitely want to make sure you're going on Career Buzz and just seeing when there's going to be career fairs and other things like that going on. Like I said, I never got an internship or a job through here, and looking back, I probably could have utilized it more. So I would recommend you at least go on there, fill in your information, play around with it a little bit, see if it's something interesting, and then if you don't like it, you never have to use it again, but at least give it a shot. All right guys, if you found that video useful, please hit that thumbs up button and feel free to share it with someone else. If you have any other sites you think would be relevant, feel free to leave those down below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for new videos every single week. That's it, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.